Hello and welcome to Sweetcast. I'm Clint, as always, and I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but stuff just keeps coming up. Um, okay, so I, I put this up on Twitter the other day, and to me, this is how I envision the future of Comicsgate. Yeah, it's a little silly, but there really is an evolution. Comicsgate itself is certainly a movement, and I've explained this in pre previous vid videos uh, that a movement doesn't last just by nature of a movement. It's going to run out of steam. So, but we can leverage that movement to do something great. Um, so in my suggestion, this is, this whole video is going to be about how I think that could go. It could go differently. And you can tell me in the comments below, I am not saying that this is the only way to go. I'm saying this is one way that we could leverage this movement. So first it's Comicsgate. Next it's, I'm calling it here, Indie Comics Coalition. I don't care what it's called. But if there are a lot of different small publishers that are being created, like all caps comics, um, like you know there already are right now, and um, getting those small publishers together so that they're they're being able to leverage their numbers in order to get more resources in the market, it's going to be good for everybody. When I first thought about this, I thought, you know, it's kind of a utopian idea. There's no way that you're going to get all those people to agree. I just don't, I can't see that happening. Um, however, I did think of an example of where it works. And the more I think about it, the more I think that it's totally plausible because it happens all the time. For example, here in the great state of Utah, there is the Associated Food Stores. It is a, a whole bunch of different independent retailers, small grocery stores. They either have one store or maybe they have a few stores. It's a small chain, but it's really hard for them to compete with larger uh, stores like Kroger uh, or Walmart. And so by being in this food association, they are able to pull their resources. I don't know a lot about all the specific details, but I do know that this also includes them being able to get a generic brand of food that they all share. And that generic brand, yeah, it goes to each store. They are able to compete because of the volume. So would something like this work for indie comics? I think it could, but there'd be there'd have to be some pretty specific agreements and um yeah some some definite details that have to that everyone would have to agree upon but i think it's possible so i want to show you my list of things but first let's uh go over to indiegogo and there's a comic called the knox and i love this tagline the hardest part about breaking into fort knox is getting out with the gold and this project is still in need to get funded there's a month left and yeah, they still have a, a ways to go. So I would say just look at it and consider it. I'm going to scroll down and, and look at the artwork here a little bit. Uh, these black and whites look nice. I can already just tell the storytelling I'm with, without any words. There's some nice storytelling going on. Uh, so if you're in the market for a comic, you want to check something out, you want to support an indie creator, this is, this is one possibility. So I would suggest you give a look at it. Okay, so... A whole bunch of things to consider if you're talking about creating a comic book coalition indie comic creator coalition of some kind distribution is huge so if there if such a coalition was put together i imagine it would be very doable to get diamond distribution to be willing to take these comic books and distribute them to stores if that was the case you're gold you're good You've got what you need. You've got the distribution. If not, there's still more leverage and there would definitely be more work to do. But I think the the odds of getting distribution when you're a big uh, collective of publishing houses, it's a lot easier to do when you're working together. Marketing is another consideration. And how would this work? Well, I can think of a few different ways. Um, but if all of these indie creators are working on their own platforms that they're 
uh, they've launched and they're they're promoting comics from the cool thing here is that they could each cross promote each other's comics when they're being released and so you'd actually have a massive massive reach because of that so i think there'd have to be some kind of an agreement and some kind of marketing schedule that uh yeah they could work on together and you wouldn't need it would be platforms that already exist and i would think um yeah there'd also be potentially money or profits they would they'd have to decide what percentage would go to marketing uh, what would be necessary there so online store this is easy probably the easiest one to tackle uh, but customers are not going to especially not mainstream customers they're not going to be always ready and willing to support a crowdfunding campaign and so having an online store with back issues with uh, you know new releases everything scheduled in one place people know where to look that would be massive but that's also probably the easiest thing on this list next is legal so resources legal resources i think obviously it's important for any kind of business um, but again if they're pulled together they they could certainly have one lawyer that would help them out or you know depending on how big this is but legal would be a consideration and it'd be something that everyone would benefit from. So a, a release schedule, and what I mean by this is a consistent release schedule. Every month there should be something coming out. Every month. I'm not saying that there has to be issues, you know, single issues coming out, but I, if I'm a comic fan, I should be able to look at a release calendar and see it's the month of November and I have four different things coming out and they could be miniseries, they could be single issues, they could be graphic novels, whatever it might be, there is a constant supply to the market. I think this is really important. And then fans know when they can expect items. And so there, this, there'd have to be some kind of control over it. That is what the public expects, is to know when things are coming out. And that's something that really, something like this could really help if there was an agreement between all these small publishing houses they could it would certainly help quality control is very important and this to me was one of the hardest questions to an to answer and that is who gets to be part of this coalition what publishers are good enough to be in it i don't know the answer to that question there are several ways that you could go about doing it you could say anybody that is uh, into comics gate could could join but the problem i have there is it has less to do with quality and more to do with do you agree with this set of criteria do you agree with our our uh, stance against political propaganda in comics and i just see that being a slippery slope so to me it one way it could work is you could have people in the coalition and they each have a vote and maybe you review review new comics from a new publisher that wants to join and together they vote and you know some kind of quality control there um, again that have to be worked out but in order for this indie comic coalition to compete with marvel and dc you're going to have to have some kind of quality control so people know what kind of quality to expect so you're not going to get some really you know you're not going to get some duds coming through printing discounts this is massive and not just printing of comic books or graphic novels but also t-shirts uh toys like whatever kind of merchandising there's going to be massive discounts just because you can order in bulk and on a regular schedule so i think this is a massive massive help and that wouldn't it at all be difficult to set up so one more thing here i didn't put on the list but to me, I think it'd be interesting, and that is having some kind of a rating system. Hear me out first, okay? This isn't like a comics code thing, but I think readers appreciate knowing what they're what they're going to get. There was a lot of debate within Comicsgate as to what comics are, what's Comic Gate Comicsgate is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be entirely apolitical, or is it supposed to be? Uh, representing the right side of the aisle. I think the best way to solve that problem is to have it clearly labeled. I, I really believe that people don't have a problem reading mildly political books. 
if that's what they're there to read, if that's what they're expecting to read, I think that's okay. And so if there were some kind of rating system, yes, you'd want to say what is mature and what's for teens, what's for all ages, but you'd also want to list what you could expect in the book. Um, you know, horror, nudity, strong political themes, perhaps that might at least be a nice uh, middle ground for both parties to feel good about. So I, I realize I don't have everything figured out. I'm just trying to think about how this could work. I think it could work. There'd have to be a lot of discussion and a lot of these details would have to be worked out, but I'm really excited and I hope that things go this direction because together there is strength, but we also want to utilize capitalism. We're not some big collective. Uh, We want to use the market and use our power in the market to become the new industry. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Is my plan nonsensical? Do you have a better route? Am I overlooking something? And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I could use the help and I will see you in the next episode.